Baptists have been around for 400 years, but we're continually changing. That's because we're really best described as a movement of Christians. We've been gathered together by Christ, and then in the power of the Spirit, we've been sent out to work for Him. These are really challenging days, and so it's a good moment for us to look back at our radical history, to remind ourselves of where we've come from, and to remind ourselves of the journey we're on with the Holy Spirit. So what is a typical Baptist? I'm not too sure, so I'd like to find out. The Baptist pioneers Smythe and Helwys both wrote of the possibility of women deacons 400 years ago. Baptist churches did give to women a recognition they had not previously had. Their experience of God counted as equal to a man's and they were welcomed into full church membership. Women were exercising a recognised ministry in the church, that of deaconess from 1662. However, it wasn't until the 1890s that the order of deaconesses came into being as a result of a concern for spirituality, health and welfare in the community. Then it wasn't until the 1920s that the Baptist Union recognised women ministers on the accredited list. Meanwhile, 19th century developments such as Sunday School and the women-only BMS Zinana Mission gave new opportunities to serve and witness. Two women were platform speakers at the Baptist Union Assembly in 1889. And today, nearly 40% of Baptist student ministers are women. After a long process, really, of hearing a call when I was younger, actually, um, there was a moment in time when my husband and I felt, yes, this is, this is the opportunity for me to go to college. We could afford for that to happen and the children were at an age I had the support of family and friends around me. And this is the opportunity to go to college. And perhaps it was about exploring what God was saying in that. Um, and, and it led to full-time Baptist ministry, which you know was a real privilege and, and perhaps unexpected in some ways, but it just felt absolutely right when that moment came. So, and, and it was after college that I was called to go to Markgate Baptist Church as their part-time pastor at the time. It's great to hear what Dawn has said about women in ministry, but what is happening with children and teenagers in churches today? We were talking about young people across the nation. The thing that's happening that I'm hearing young people say all the time is that I'm not being heard and it looks like I'm, I'm just going to be a, a, what they call a lost generation. But what the Baptist Church can off, offer through your church meetings, a voice in which young people could shape and build church policy, that young people have an opportunity to mould, and that independence, that fierce independence that Baptist churches have, why don't you use that now to cultivate young people? Um, and that's what my young people have been amazed with within the church meeting. They have a voice. The whole impetus away from the old order and into Baptist life was that the church was not a machine through which grace flowed, controlled by the keepers of grace, the priests and bishops, but that the church was the gathered people of God, gathered by God and each with a place and a responsibility before God for the whole. To be a member of such a church was dependent on the experience of the saving power of Christ and admittance into membership required the expression of that experience. And this experience was the same for women and men. The genius of the church meeting is that it gives dignity and respect to all members of the local church to be involved in discerning the mind of Christ. The decision making of the church is very important and uh, the church meeting therefore is, is vital. We come together as a company of God's people to sense his way forward for us. Uh, the leadership 
endeavours to make their decisions and then we bring those to the church meetings and sometimes there are challenges for us uh, but we have a terrific sense of unity amongst us, terrific sense of togetherness which I love. Baptists 400 years ago and through the centuries have been known for wanting to make a difference. Showing respect to all inspired a young man called William Nibb, described by some as a liberator of the slaves. His elder brother Thomas was a missionary school teacher in Jamaica. When Thomas died, William volunteered to follow on his sterling work. Age 21, he married Mary Watkins and they set sail to Jamaica. But William was not the only person who demonstrated faith in the prowess of black people. Sam Sharp, a Baptist deacon known as Daddy Sharp, is remembered for his leading role in the Christmas Revolution of 1831 which became a key event in the fight for the abolishment of slavery, abolished in 1834. William Wilberforce and Queen Nanny also played an active part in the abolition of the Slave Trade Act. Today, Baptists are also among those leading the way in challenging people trafficking, active in the fight for fair trade and supporting campaigns with organisations like Christian Aid on behalf of developing countries. The Baptist Union Joint Public Issues team speak regularly with government and help churches engage with society and current issues. Thomas Helwes, minister of the First Baptist Church, which was here at Spitalfields, England, wrote a book, A Short Declaration of the Mystery of Iniquity. This was the first published demand to be made in England for religious liberty, or freedom of conscience, as it is sometimes called. For his courage, he was thrown in Newgate Jail where he died. Died that others might have freedom of conscience. One of the things that I think Baptist churches are really good at is being plugged into society. Um, the churches that I see working in this area and the Baptist churches that I know from meeting with the ministers and the people in those churches and when we gather together, is how well that they are plugged into the communities which they're a part of. Each one's different, each one's individual, um, but each one has recognised the needs of the communities that they're a part of. This church did it really well 25 years ago when it was established and it moved from its old building. We still need to keep doing that, we still need to keep plugged in. We, uh, we centre our outreach when we engage with the community and the world at large uh, through that word, open door. It's an important word to us and uh, it's, it's a word that inspires us really to, to be a church on the move, you know, not to be sat here waiting for the world to come into the church, but to be a church which is a part uh, of the community, incarnate, great biblical word, but we are, we're in the community and we have an open door. And one of the things that I try to do in my ministry here and especially within our worship context is give people freedom, freedom to think, freedom to engage, um, freedom to express themselves and in that freedom they've learned to grow um, and they've grown in their faith. When it comes to worship, I like Matt Redman but I'm not too sure about all the old hymns. We Baptists do like to sing even when there has been a dispute about new or old hymns or choruses. Benjamin Keach was baptised at the age of 15 and began preaching at 18. He wrote a work entitled The Child's Instructor, which immediately brought him under persecution and he was fined and pilloried in 1664. Benjamin continued to write, in particular hymns for the people to sing. This was a musical revolution. His church, Horsley Down, was probably the first church in England to sing hymns as opposed to psalms and paraphrases. Whether a church sings Watts or Kendrick, Wesley or Martin Smith, it is drawing on the revolution in church music started by a Baptist. And so, Baptists continue to worship with new and old music and different forms of worship. We celebrate diversity and celebrate with diversity. As far as worship is concerned in our churches, in many respects it's very exciting because there are new expressions, um, more contemporary forms of music are being used and uh, in many instances there's a real vibrancy and life about the worship of our churches. The different styles we have in worship, we have rap, we have traditional gospel, we have, um, we sing from the Baptist hymn book, we sing hymns, we sing Wesleyan hymns, um, all that diversity, we sing contemporary uh, worship of kind of Matt, uh, Matt Redman and Tim Hughes, we sing that, and it's such a collective mix. But really and truly, it is about your heart being prepped 
being ready to worship God. A lot of the time I find, especially when I'm praying, that I can't quite find the words to express to God exactly how I feel. And I think it, having sung worship as a, uh, a medium for worshipping God is a fantastic opportunity because there's lots of people out there who have found the words to express how they feel to God. And I think that's a fantastic way to be able to use that in church services to bring words of praise to God. Especially songs that were sometimes written over a hundred years ago that actually we can still find are very relevant today as well as songs that are written only a couple of weeks ago. Baptism is an amazing moment of testimony within someone's life. And at the heart of it all, as people of the book, Baptists believe in believers' baptism. That because we are the gathered people of God, we enter into that community through the dramatic individual expression of faith. Well, I've decided to be baptised because I've, I haven't attended an Alpha course that the church did in November. I found as I went through the course that things started to make sense to me, which it, and, and not just make sense, but it came to me with a passion. And um, I just felt it was right for me to be baptised now because I want to be washed of all my sins. Well, I've chosen to be baptised at Easter and it's all about the resurrection really, the, the dying of the old and the bringing in of the new. Since I've been here I've had the privilege of um, leading five people through the waters of baptism and it is such a privilege to be, um, to be able to celebrate with somebody that turning point in their lives. From what I understand about Baptists, we should be concerned about sharing our faith with others. Mission is at the heart of what it means to be a Baptist. It's been part of our history for 400 years. And there's been mission here in Kislinbury for over 200 of those years. A young man in the Midlands challenged his elders. He read a book by Jonathan Edwards, no, not our general secretary, and the journals of the explorer James Cook, and became deeply concerned with taking the gospel throughout the world. Despite opposition, he started a movement which eventually became the Baptist Missionary Society, now BMS World Mission. This in turn led to the modern missionary movement with Methodists, Anglicans and others following. Early versions of the Home Mission Fund go back over 200 years as itinerant preachers travelled across the country. And here in Kislinbury, we were supported over 200 years ago in that way. Nowadays, Home Mission supports ministers like me, mission grants, chaplaincies, the associations and the national resource. I spend part of my week doing kind of traditional Baptist church as uh, most ministers do and part of my week living here on Upton uh, building community. So we do that in lots of different ways and one way we do this is on a Wednesday morning when we invite new mums to come to the house and uh, have coffee, tea and coffee and cake and get to know one another better. I look forward to coming because obviously when you're on maternity you sort of, it gets a bit lonely like being a no, especially when you're a first time mum. It's nice to have a bit of adult conversation, a bit of human contact would be the word. Um, just because you, otherwise you, you can tend to get in, stuck in a rut where you sit at home and you never leave the house. Whereas this is a good excuse to come out, leave the house and also let the kids interact with other children which is always good for them. So that's what it means to be Baptist both in the past and today. We have a rich history and it's inspiring to be reminded of it. However, God doesn't call us to serve him in the past, but in the here and now. It's wonderful to look back to those who've gone before us, to see their courage, to see their commitment, but above all else, to see their passionate love for Jesus. So where's the Holy Spirit gonna take us now? We genuinely don't know the answer to that. However, it's wonderful to be a part of this Baptist movement, isn't it? In which the Holy Spirit is leading us to new places as we serve Him together. As we celebrate 400 years of being a Baptist witness in the UK, why not consider making a special thank you gift to Home Mission? It would be wonderful if you could, as a church or individual, make a donation of £400. Just imagine how your generous giving to Home Mission could enable others call to serve God as we enter our next 400 years as a Baptist family. Thank you.